G'day everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now I just vibe coded a SharePoint web part uh, from development right through to production and deployed to our app catalog and to our SharePoint site. That's what we're gonna take a look at in this video, how we can get started. Now I use Cursor for this vibe coding little project. So we're gonna get started with Cursor as well. Now if you don't know what vibe coding is, let's just ask Copilot. What is a vibe coding? And let's see what Copilot gives us as an answer. All right. So you can see here, vibe coding allows developers to describe what they want in natural language and then um, have AI typically some type of LLM. Now in this case, I'm using Cursor and we're going to be using Claude Sonnet 4.0 and it generates the code. So we can have a conversation with our developer and watch the code actually right on the screen. Really, really handy. So let's get stuck into it. We'll open up Cursor. Now I am going to open a folder. All right, so let's start. I'm going to just create a new folder here and let's call this Vibe Coding, all right? And we will open this folder and we'll select that. So now what we're going to be starting with is a blank canvas, but we want to start with our SharePoint, uh, a SharePoint web part. So I'm gonna open up my new terminal and then I am going to say, yo, at Microsoft, uh, forward slash SharePoint, okay? So let's just go at my Microsoft, I'll type it all out, forward slash SharePoint, and we'll hit enter, all right? We'll get that up and running, and then we'll watch as this project gets started and built out as well. All right, so our Vibe Coding web part is ready to test. So. Let's go for gulp serve and let's see what happens. All right, so we'll do that. It's gonna serve it up into the workbench. So let's open up our browser and we will just wait for that to get ready to go. All right, so we can see that that is now running, but what we can see here is that we get an error, all right? So all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy and paste this, right? So I'm gonna grab this error. I'm gonna come back into cursor. Now I'm going to have a chat on the right-hand side. Now we can see with these uh, these little options here, we can turn auto off and you can see that I'm using Claude for Sonnet, all right? So I'm just gonna flick that back to auto and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in this error message, all right? And let's have a look and see what happens, all right? So what Claude's doing now is it is trying to work out this problem for me, all right? So I've got no idea what this problem is, all right? So we can see here, this is what we need to do, all right? And we need to replace the tenant domain name placeholder in the serve.json, all right? So what we're gonna do is I am just going to pass in and just say uh, my tenant, Domain name is danielanderson.sharepoint.com, all right? And let's have a look. So now what's uh, what Curse is doing is up is updating this file for me. So it's updating the surf.json file with the actual tenant domain. And we are given some more instructions here. And what we might do is we're just going to control C this. We'll stop the uh, the running of this uh, right now, and then we'll go gulp serve again, and let's see what happens, see if that fixes, right? Now, let's just bring this across, all right? So that's what we did get, and let's have a look. So now we've got the workbench, and voila, there we go, all right? So we can see there that just by talking to cursor in natural language, we actually get a result, and we've got our uh, our, our uh, workbench happening there, all right? So if I drag this back across. So what I'm gonna do now is let's now say, um, can we create a hello, a simple hello world web part, all right? So again, I'm just using natural language. <clears throat> We're using Claude for Sonnet and here we go. So what's happening now? Uh, it's already got a hello world web part and it's going to check the current implementation and then simplify it, all right? So it's writing out the code for me. We can see on the on the right hand side here what's going on, all right? So it's doing what it needs to do 
and we'll just wait for all of this and let's just have a look and it's finished and that looks pretty good. Now we can accept all if we want. All right, so once this is all done, then we've got this option to accept all down the bottom uh, right hand side here. So we'll just, it's updating the CSS just to make it look a bit nicer. And again, just something I haven't uh, asked it to do. All right, so again, if we wanted to do something different or we wanted a, a certain style or something like that, then that we could also ask uh, in that chat to do it in a certain in a certain style. So let me just drag this back across now and and I'll hit and I'll add a web part. And there is our Hello World web part. So I'm just gonna open that and there we go, all right? So we've got a, a, a simple web part just by using natural language and doing what we, what we call vibe coding. Now, let's have a look at what I actually built, all right? So let me just drag this back across and let's open up, I'm gonna open up the SharePoint site that I have deployed this web part to. All right, so I'll grab this, not the Hello World web part, the one I actually just thought I'd, I'd have a go at putting together. So this is the web part that I ended up putting together, right? So what it is, is a web part. And again, all I was doing was natural language querying in cursor and this web part is a really, really, really simple web part. It's got a site URL and it's got a list name. So this list is holding some data, all right? So if I jump in over into my performance metrics list here, we can say I've got three items and I've got some certain values, all right? So what this web part's doing is just displaying those values in this web part in a nice UI of a dashboard card. So I'll just save and close that. And all that was all that was done um, through cursor, all right? So let's see, um, I'm going to write in here. Uh, now let's, um, instead of the hello world, um, I want to read data from a list called performance metrics. Uh, and that list is on a site at this URL. All right, so I'm just gonna grab the URL of that site which is over here. So I'm just gonna grab that and paste that in. All right, so we'll go uh, this URL. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a screenshot of this image here. And let's hit the new button and I'll grab a screenshot of this. And I'm just going, all I'm gonna say is I am going to say, um, please display the data from the list um, in the style of the attached image. And I'll paste that image in there and you can see that image there and I'll just hit enter, all right? So again, just by speaking, and here is what is going to happen, all right? So list columns to proceed needs to know the exact column names, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to give and pass in the column names. And let me just, again, grab the site. We'll go to our performance metric site here. And what we'll do is we'll just split the screen and we'll go like this. And let's say, let's use title, uh, main value, main label, secondary value, secondary label. Uh, and I think the last one is footer text. We'll go footer text. Now we've just got to make sure that the right, the the spelling's right on these. So main value, main label is incorrect. Uh, secondary value, secondary label, footer text, and we are good to go. And you can see that it also asked me a question here. 
Um, do we want to use the SharePoint REST API or PMPJS? PMPJS is, is easier and more modern, but REST is built in. So how about we go with, let's just do the, uh, let's just use the REST API. Uh, please use the REST API. And off we go. So now that I've given it what we want, then it's going to create this. All right, so you can see using this data model, using those fields, the steps to implement, update the props, and all of a sudden, this is what's gonna happen. All right, so you can see down the bottom, we're updating interfaces, fetching data in the web, etc., etc. Now, we're not gonna sit through and, and watch all this. This was just really a primer and uh, just to show what the capabilities are now that we have this type of functionality inside of our uh, inside of certain applications, we can now do what we call vibe code, and we can actually just talk to an assistant developer here and get developing and create some amazing web parts. Uh, in if we're talking about SharePoint or even full blown web apps as well. So. I hope that brings you some value. Um, go and have a crack at, at vibe coding some web parts and see what you come up with. Thanks for watching.